Hey guys, this is Alex C with TFP TV, and today we're testing a pretty cool gun that's going to be the Faxon ARAK-21, or ARAK-21. First time I actually shot this was at a conference in Florida, and I was actually pretty impressed with it. It has a nice recoil impulse, it handles pretty well. Something I don't like is it does weigh 7.8 pounds, so that's going to be a pound and a half heavier than a standard M4 carbine. Um, but other than that, the manual of arms is kind of interesting. It's very HK-like with the forward-mounted uh, flap slash paddle that I personally like being uh, a fan of the G3 MP5 HK 33 series of rifles. Here early in the test we went ahead and knocked out the accuracy test. Patrick and I both shot two five shot groups. Um, we were using standard M193 ball ammunition. Um, so yeah, it uh, shot well. We both thought the recoil impulse was nice. And the safety is in the position that it is on an AR-15, obviously, as this system is self-contained and can be mounted on an AR-15 lower without any modifications, which is uh, pretty cool, actually. So if you have an AR-15, then uh, it's plug and play. But uh, you can see here we're finishing up the accuracy test, basically because we want to get to the fun part, and that's going to be our extreme reliability test. Um, Patrick's finishing up here, but uh, let's take a look at the groups we shot. All right, guys, so Patrick and I both shot two five-shot groups. We actually first started out to get the gun sighted in with a 10-shot group right here, which measures, let's see, that's two and three-quarters inches at 100 yards for a 10-shot group, which is not terrible. Um, we move over to my first five-shot group. And we're looking at two and a quarter inches. Um, as a frame of reference with an AR-15 and that exact optic, which I've done in the past, you can read some of my reviews, I'll usually group about 1.4 to 1.6 inches. So the ARAC didn't do quite as well as I normally could. Uh, my second group is here. Um, however, these three actually belong to a separate uh, deal we were doing earlier. Or sorry, these, uh, these uh, two, I believe. But that is... Just a little over two inches, which is not bad. Um, so Patrick's groups, um, it's worth noting, obviously people, the eyes are a little bit different and on the eye protection can mess with the optic setup a little bit. I'm not a scientist, but I think that's how that works. Well, we got two and a half inches here if we omit this, this flyer here. Um, and you know, first time with a new gun, you're gonna get a flyer. But if we move over to Patrick's other group here, It's a little over three inches at 100 meters, 100, or sorry, 100 yards. So um, not quite as accurate as an M16 AR-15, but um, they're really faming, or they're really pushing the reliability of these guns. So let's see how it does with some adverse conditions and a whole lot of ammo. The fun part of the test. All right, guys, so we're out here with the ARAC-21, and it's time for the torture test. We've got 600 rounds of ammunition provided by Ventura Munitions, our ammunition sponsor and we're going to test the hell out of this gun to make sure it's as reliable as the good people at Faxon say. So, uh, what do you say we get to it? Yeah, I think so. All right, guys, first test is gonna be using some good old Texas topsoil. Let's get to it. Make sure it gets nice and in there. Didn't go into battery. Looks like it's having some trouble. Trouble feeding here with the soil test. Okay, so we had two pretty good malfunctions. I'm gonna do that one more time. All right, guys, topsoil test part two. Gonna do the exact same thing. Now, the, the people at Faxon I've talked to say that the open ejection port is actually good because it lets 
some uh, debris, or sorry, media fall through there. Although we had two malfunctions on the first dust test. Let's give it another go. That one went okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna clean out some of the dirt and dust with some water, just like I do all my rifles, after I do this sort of testing. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Now I'm gonna run a quick 90 rounds through it. After I karate chop the takedown pin. Here we go. Got one malfunction. I basically have to reset the trigger manually each time. It's almost like uh, it's almost like some sort of strange single shot repeater, like a straight pull in reverse or something. I don't know. All right, so here's when stuff started going pretty wrong. Um, you can see I started just kind of smacking it to hopefully maybe get whatever was holding it up you know out of there make it hopefully function better but basically no matter what I did um, I could not get that trigger to work we pretty much killed the trigger um, you can see it functions basically if I either smack the hell out of it or if I would manually reset the trigger um, not gonna lie I was getting a little frustrated at this point but uh, we kept on going and then it started having some wackadoo malfunctions Huh, all right. I'm gonna do one more mag for good measure. All right, so basically I speed it up here because the trigger reset issue is still there and uh, it was a real pain to get it to go. I kept smacking it and doing everything I could until we had another very strange malfunction. Another malfunction here that doesn't involve the trigger. One more here. And unfortunately, the problems just basically persisted. No matter what I did, I couldn't get that trigger to reset. I was smacking it. You know, I was getting really frustrated at this point, um, which is unfortunate because when the rifle works, it shoots great. All right, so at this point of the test, Patrick basically decided to cut a little hole in the top of a bottle of water and blast out the trigger group because it was not resetting basically at all. So uh, we had a redneck, I guess, pressure washer here, and we tried to blast out as much of the media and sand as possible, as you can see. 
Um, that would kill most any firearm, however. Even an M4 wouldn't allow that much dirt and dust to get under the trigger and uh, prevent functioning. I know that because I've performed this with uh, an M4 before. All right, so I just cleaned it out and uh, I'm gonna give it a quick magazine through it and kind of function check it. Nope. I'm getting a lot of spray back towards my face. Alright, so uh, we may have broken the return spring on the trigger or something. Alright, at this point Patrick decided to put some old-fashioned CLP in the trigger group and then use a toothbrush to really brush it in and get some of the dirt out. Uh, we were hoping that this would help with the trigger reset issue and hopefully solve the, the reliability issue in that arena. Um, so we were pretty generous with this. Alright, so uh, you can see I just got back from some tactical operations and uh, I need to go ahead and make sure my gun is still good to go. Nope, well, same problem with the trigger. I think we broke something. And now it's not feeding. Oh God. Try another magazine. <sighs> you know, everybody says there's no reason for a forward assist. This might be one. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I, I, at this point, I don't know if I feel safe continuing. The gun is not going into battery all the way. There's no forward assist to ensure it's there. Um, the trigger group is malfunctioning. We've lost the muzzle device. I mean, I know an AK would have withstood all this. I know at your bargain bin, an AR-15 would have withstood all this. So I, I think I'm going to call it quits at this point. All right, guys. So that concludes our day with the ARAC-21. Uh, we put it through hell and back, and I, I'm sad to say it, it didn't do too well. Um, I think we were a little bit harder on it because of Faxon's claims of its uh, you know, unparalleled reliability. And, yeah, and, you know, that's kind of one of the selling points of this gun is it's, uh, you know, it's, got a, it's a piston gun. It's an improvement on the AR-15. It's got some really cool features, it really does. Um, yeah. Overall shooting impressions when we were doing the accuracy test, the recoil impulse is nice. Um, the muzzle brake did a good job until it came off. And uh, It was obnoxious though, I don't like that. It was loud, but you know, that's a muzzle brake for you. Um, accuracy, it was okay actually. We've shot guns that were worse. And uh, you know, I guess right. we've been spoiled by a lot of really nice AR-15s and stuff. Yeah, I mean a lot of the ones that I own are, are just, you know, really really accurate it's on par with the aug we tested a while back the styre aug you know i i would say that this is probably on par with just about any service rifle out there granted it's not a service rifle but and, and they make their own barrels in-house too which right. is cool you know, and I, I, you know this is the first opportunity i've had to go ahead and shoot a fax and barrel i'd like to have an opportunity to take a look at some of their other offerings maybe for the nar-15 that i know is accurate yeah um now that gets us uh, past the positives guys um Unfortunately, you just saw the torture test, and it did not fare too well. No. Um, we've done the same thing with an AK. 
We have, um, and you know, you can see that in our uh, AK meltdown or AK burning AK video. I don't well, we've also we done it out here for fun and stuff. Yeah, we've done it on our own time, and, um, and you know, it ran great. We've done AR-15 no M16s. The M16 had one malfunction. Yep. Um, yeah, I believe I mean, that was a stove pipe. I mean, even my SBR, we've run that one really, really hard, and uh, we've never had a malfunction never. with that, with the exception of a broken bolt. Yeah, so here, we had the trigger reset problems were strange, uh, but even if you take those out of the equation, maybe if the trigger was working, we still had some pretty weird malfunctions, like a double-feed stovepipe combination thing. Right, that was really strange. I've not seen anything like that before, and maybe I haven't been shooting enough, but um, it was a unique malfunction. It yeah. was. Um, so that was strange. We had a couple of those and a couple of other traditional malfunctions. It was just, right. it was a letdown, guys. We never really want to showcase a product when it's not in its full glory. Um, obviously, we don't want any product to, to not work right. Right, and obviously this is an extreme circumstance. I know you guys aren't going to go out there and bury it in mud and grind dirt into it and then, you know, it just generally beat the hell out of your rifles because these do cost a thousand dollars for just the upper. The upper, the street price on the upper from AIM Surplus right now is over a thousand. Right. And that's so, a lot of money, I mean, guys, yeah. my, my, me, myself, I'm not going to go ahead and throw around a thousand dollars. I'm not wealthy enough to do so. Um, thankfully, we had the opportunity to do this. It was a lot of fun. But I, I, you guys aren't going to be using it like that. Yeah, and uh, you know, for a thousand bucks, guys, that's the price of a really nice AR-15 M16, or sorry, AR-15. Um, and it would be hard for me to tell you in good conscience that you need to spend a thousand dollars on this versus that, as unless you just start, you know, that's stacked to the brim with everything else. Right. So, well, let's circle back around to the stuff that we we've already talked about the stuff we didn't we liked. We talked about the failure in the torture test. Let's circle back around to the stuff that we don't like about this gun. Um, I will say one more thing I do like. I like the charging handle. You don't. I, I really hate it. Um, it, it, it. It looks like it's a cast piece and it's folding. Well, but something I noticed. We threw it pretty hard right on that charging handle and it, right. it didn't break. Yeah. So that was good. Um, you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is heavy. It's very heavy. You know, and that's something common with uh, these monolithic AR uppers. It's also caliber convertible, which is which is nice. I showed that earlier in the opening of the video and all the other cool features like that. But, um, you know, guys, I am let down by the torture test. We set aside 600 rounds. Uh, we were going to originally do 1,000, but uh, that would have been a long, expensive test. However, we didn't get through that many rounds, unfortunately. No. Um, realistically, though, if you're looking for a, uh, a piston AR sort of setup, and you don't require the buttstock to be foldable, I might take a look at something else. Um, something maybe like the uh, the Ruger rifle that's piston driven, or even one of the HK offerings. Uh, it, those live up to the claims of reliability. We just don't see this. I can pro yeah, I can promise you that the uh, HK416 upper would have been would have dominated this test. Um, but you know, it's unfortunate, guys. But yeah. You know, thanks for Venturi Ammunition for providing all the ammo for this test. Even though we didn't use it all, we use it in a future test. So thanks to those guys. Yep, and I want to go ahead and thank Grizzly Targets. We were hit, hitting them pretty hard earlier uh, on the accuracy test. We were just kind of planking on it. And uh, they held up really well. And I will say, guys, Faxon does have great customer service. So they will respond to this. And ultimately, if this was your gun, they would go to great lengths to fix that. I can assure you that. I've met the owner of the company, Bob, at a conference. Great guy. Great people work there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they have to say. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and hear the rebuttal. Yeah. Anyways, I'm Alex C. And I'm Patrick Gar. Thanks for watching TFP TV, guys.